out before we begin the service proper. Um, first of all, it is lovely to see all of you here for this service for the fifth Sunday of the month where we combine both our parishes and it's lovely to welcome members of uh, St. James's congregation here to St. Peter's and thank you choir and organist for the music. Um, it's nice to sing hymns for a change at St. Peter's and hopefully we might even be singing the Gloria which we've not sung here in this church for quite some time. Most of the notices you need are on the notice sheet, so please do take that with you at the end of the service because there are uh, a number of hopefully relevant things. But if I could just highlight one or two, um, the first of which is not on the notice sheet, but um, I think Kevin may have mentioned it last week, but uh, um, Kevin has uh, reviewed the COVID precautions that we have been undertaking in these parishes. And, uh, and at the moment, um, things like face mask wearing is um, up to personal choice. So if you feel you can't sing for a face mask, you are um, at liberty to remove it if you so wish. But just be considerate of other people who um, rightly remain cautious about these things. For those at St. James's who um, knew Wendy and John Allen, um, Wendy was uh, our church warden until sadly last summer. Um, Wendy and John sadly died from COVID last year and because it was the middle of the, uh, the pandemic, we weren't able as a parish to mourn their loss and to, to grieve as a family. So we are having a memorial service for the two of them this coming Wednesday at six o'clock in St. James's. Um, and it will be lovely if as many people as possible who who knew Wendy and John or, or who just want to be there anyway um, would like to come and join us for that. I think it'll be a lovely opportunity to, to give thanks for their lives and their contributions to not just St James's Church but also St John's down in Calder Grove. And in that service we'll be blessing a new icon of St James which um, is donated in memory of John and Wendy. So that's six o'clock this coming Wednesday, the 3rd of November. Um, we also, next Sunday, have our All Souls services. Um, I think next Sunday is the 7th of November, isn't it? Um, losing the plot slightly. Um, so we'll have two services, one at each church, um, for us to um, remember those who have um, departed this life, perhaps in the last year, but also loved ones that we would just like to cherish in our hearts. So um, do, do come along to those. There is also um, a sign-up sheet at the back of this church for those who would like to add names to re be remembered here at St. Peter's. Uh, there was another one at St. James's, but if you haven't accessed that, then just let me or Kevin know if you have any names. Um, and then the, no, not the final one, uh, just to, to remember that there's Remembrance Sunday coming up, so do, um, do note the times of services for Remembrance Sunday, because they will be different. And the final thing I've been asked to mention is that um, St. Peter's will be having a Christmas tree festival and we need volunteers to help sort of man the gates and um, just make sure that um, the church stays open and people can come and look at what hopefully be a lovely uh, festival. So there is a signing up sheet for that at the back of the church and um, I encourage anyone at St. Peter's or at St. James if you so wish as well um, to put your names down if if you can give some time to that. So thank you very much. The final notice is not really a notice, but it is um, to mark a significant point in, uh, in our parish's lives, um, parishes plural that is, because tomorrow um, the uniting of our two benefices, um, so that is the churches of St. James's, St. Peter's and the Church of West Breton, um, the uniting of the benefices comes into legal effect tomorrow and although you may not notice any great difference because it means that really you're, you're sharing the clergy between you uh, but still maintaining your unique identities, I think that it is um, something to be thankful for and perhaps a, a, a springboard for closer collaboration between the two parishes for the future. So I wonder if you would just join me in praying for the unification of our two benefices 
and, um, and give thanks to God for all that hopefully will be in the future. So let us pray. Almighty God, the source of all unity, we give you thanks and praise for the unification of our two parishes under the leadership of heaven. Help us to remove all barriers to our common mission. Allow us to accept our differences and let each parish grow in mutual love and friendship so that together we may support each other and work more closely to proclaim the gospel in each place. We ask especially for your blessing on all who share in the life and work of our parishes, in the ministry of word and sacrament, in outreach and pastoral care, in service to the diocese, the community and those in need, and in fellowship and hospitality with each other. And we pray for all members of the congregations of Woolley, West Breton and Chapelthorpe. May we all, as one united benefice, advance your kingdom and bear witness to the love of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So would you like to stand as we begin our service? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We gather here today to celebrate the great cloud of witnesses, all the saints of the Church of God. And so, let us rejoice. People of God, let us praise the Lord. Let us keep the feast in honour of all God's saints, in whose victory the angels rejoice and glorify the Son of God. We say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, block the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, looking to Jesus in penitence and faith. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, for our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Jesus saves. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Grant us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those inexpressible joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We sit for the readings. first reading is from the Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3, verses 1 to 9. The souls of the righteous are in the hand of God, and no torment will ever touch them. In the eyes of the foolish, they seem to have died, and their departure was thought to be a disaster, and they're going from us to be their destruction, but they are at peace. For though in the sight of others they were punished, their hope is full of immortality. Having been disciplined a little, they will receive great good, because God tested them and found them worthy of himself. Like gold in the furnace, he tried them, and like a sacrificial burnt offering, he accepted them. In the time of their visitation, they will shine forth and will run like sparks through the stubble. They will govern nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord will reign over them forever. Those who trust in him will understand truth, and the faithful will abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are upon his holy ones, and he watches over his elect. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm is 24, verses 1 to 6. The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. The earth is the Lord's and all that fills it, the compass of the world and all who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and set it firm upon the rivers of the deep. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord or who can rise up in his holy place? Those who have clean hands and a pure heart, who have not lifted up their soul to an idol nor sworn an oath to a lie, they shall receive a blessing from the Lord a just reward from the God of their salvation. Such is the company of those who seek him, of those who seek your face, O God of Jacob. The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. O Lord of hosts, purify our hearts, that the King of glory may come in, your Son, Jesus, our Redeemer. The New Testament reading is taken from the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verses 1 to 6. I, John, saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. 
he will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. This is the word of the Lord. We remain seated to sing our gradual hymn number 304. chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, called out of darkness into his marvellous light. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, She knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, 
Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they might believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Where have you laid him? Jesus asked them. The thing that strikes me most about Mary and Martha in today's Gospel is their loneliness. They're lonely. They're lonely for their beloved brother. They're lonely for Jesus. They're lonely for the life they used to have. They are alone in their loss and they feel abandoned. I know that feeling of loneliness and I bet every one of you here today in church and on the internet also do. I think loneliness is one of the great maladies of our world and at the centre of our loneliness lies scarcity. It's that feeling that there just isn't enough a feeling that our world is being torn apart and that we're lost in that tear. One of the unexpected effects from having lockdowns because of Covid has been people's mental health. Even though some have access to IT, even they reported about isolation and loneliness. And even when people could meet, say, here in church and at other social gatherings, they were, and is, still social distancing, depending on what that person feels, face coverings, and even in church not being able to share the peace as we once did. So even in a group, we can feel lonely and isolated. At the bottom of that tear I've just mentioned, there can be the loneliness of a friend who recently lost a job. At the bottom of that tear is the loneliness of someone else who could be diagnosed with a life-changing illness. At the bottom of that tear is the world that suffers at the hands of others. Sometimes I myself feel overwhelmed by the scarcity, whether it's mine, yours or the world's, I get scared by the loneliness I feel. When my heart and soul feel tired, weary, asking what next, wondering 
what would God want me to do? I suppose that is the power of prayer. And I suspect there's times for yourself when you feel that loneliness of others that you care for. When loneliness and scarcity overtake, we can get defensive and take things personally. We put ourselves first. This is mine, not yours. We react in fear because of change. We may act busy so we don't think of the fear. We may get stressed. We may become restless. We may search for comfort in things that we shouldn't be searching in. For the quick fix that doesn't fix at all. Again, there is the power of prayer. We may question our lives at certain times. If only. If I'd done this, if only. If I'd said that, if only. If she or he hadn't done that, if only. We all know the if only. In the Gospel, we hear, Lord, come and see, and Jesus began to weep. He knows the abyss of loneliness. He experienced it in Peter's denial, Judas's kiss, a night in Gethsemane, the God-forsaken cross. He's the one who befriends us in our loneliness. He knows us better than we know ourselves. What is it you want to bring to Jesus today? What makes you lonely today? If, you're, if you were there to name your loneliness and Jesus was before you, what would you say? Could you find the words? Or would the tears and the emotions speak for you? Where does it hurt? What is your need? Who or what is your Lazarus? This invitation for Jesus to come and see is about more than a particular circumstance in anyone's life. It's the invitation for Jesus to come and see the things we fear in our own lives. To come and see our own lowliness. To take away the mask that we wear for others. To hear the voice that we sometimes hear in the dead of night. Wherever there is scarcity in life, there is dying. Wherever there is scarcity in your life and my life, we are dying. Mary and Martha were dying that day. Scarcity is always the thief of life. Martha and Mary, however, refused to let that thief get away this time. They could no longer contain their, contain their loneliness, the scarcity in their lives. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died, Mary said. Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead for four days, Martha said. They are naming the scarcity in their lives and they are opening themselves to the abundance of Jesus. That's what today is all about. All Saints is a day to name and release our scarcity. It's a day of abundance a day to unbind the abundance of life that is already ours. 
If the saints of this life and the next life have anything to teach us, it's about the abundance of God and that abundant life that God offers. It's Saint Mary proclaiming that God has filled the hungry with good things. It's Saint Simeon declaring that his eyes have seen God's salvation and he is free to depart in peace. It is Saint Julian of Norwich promising, all shall be well, all shall be well. You yourself will see that every manner of thing shall be well. The saints know that neither scarcity nor abundance are about quantity. They are conditions of the soul, but more often than not, we want to quantify that scarcity and abundance ourselves. Mary and Martha's loneliness and scarcity will not be healed with more money, more power, a better position, a new promotion, and neither will ours. The antidote to our scarcity and loneliness is not more, it's abundance. Abundance in the medicine that heals our souls of its scarcity. That's what Mary and Martha really want. And it's what we want. We want our souls to be made whole, to be made well. We want to live the fullness of life. We want to live with integrity, meaning and purpose. We want to know that our life matters and that the values we hold make a difference. Not just for ourselves, but the lives of all whom we meet and for those whom we will never meet. We want to be connected to something larger and beyond ourselves. We want to be abundant. Whatever your story of loneliness and scarcity might be, Jesus responds to you in the same way as it was to Martha. Did I not tell you that if you believe, you would see the glory of God? Jesus is always calling forth abundance from what looks like scarcity. He turns water into wine. He feeds 5,000 with five loaves and two fish. He calls four days dead Lazarus out of the tomb. Our work is not to get abundance, but it is to grow. We are not to keep it to ourselves but release that abundance in our souls to others to save their scarcity. How might that change your lives? I don't mean that we ignore or close our eyes to the pain of the world and the pain in our lives, but we reset our judgment. We reset it to the abundance of life, to the gifts that we already have. The default setting is abundance. That's what changes and transforms lives. That's how I want to live. I want to befriend you and be your guide in your loneliness and you be my guide as well. I want us to live together in that abundance, to grasp change to listen to God, what God wants us to do, not what we want to do. I want us to stand out and speak up against scarcity in the world and in our communities. After all, aren't we the disciples of Christ? I want us to unbind all the Lazaruses and all the troubles in our communities. Don't you? Isn't that what we are called to do? We are called to come to church and give worship, but we are called to be a Christian every day of our life. We are called to look 
at the opportunities to mission wherever we go. To look for the mission that God wants, not necessarily what we want. To be guided to the abundance of life by God, Jesus and all the blessed saints. Amen. Let us now stand to declare our faith along with all the whole company of the saints in heaven in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory, to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit. The Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the Lord to come. We sit or kneel for the intercessions. <clears throat> when I say, Lord, in your mercy, please respond, hear our prayer. We pray for the work of your healing church both in this country and worldwide, and both nationally and both at local levels. We think especially of the Anglican Church in this diocese, Bishop Nick, Bishop Tony, and in the United Benefice, Reverend Keith Kevin, Reverend Dr. Catherine at St. Peter's and St. James, and Philip B. at West Breton Church. We remember today both St. Peter's and St. James twin parishes in Tanzania, Canon Johanna Yokobo and the people of St. Luke's in Tarime, and for Pastor Samuel Deber and the people of Regatta in Mara. We remember their task in ensuring that Christ's presence on earth is witnessed in the daily lives of their congregation. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for Elizabeth, our Queen, both as a leader and for her personal health, and for all the nations of the world, and for those in authority. As some of these nations meet to discuss the major problem of climate change and how to mitigate its potentially disastrous effects, we ask that they understand the enormity of the situation which faces them. <coughs> May they respond by conducting whatever is necessary <coughs> to undertake the necessary tasks, whatever hardship 
and the inconvenience this may bring in the short term, remembering their responsibility to future generations. May they remember that as humans we are stewards of God's earth and not its exploiters and destroyers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. As the shadows of food shortage lengthen for many people, both in this country and abroad, we ask that those more fortunate are inspired to give of their wealth to support those less fortunate than themselves, as Christ commanded them to do, remembering that they do this in his name. Watch over them, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray that all those ministering to the sick and the aged may be strengthened and protected so that they may can persevere in their work, sustained and strengthened in your love. We pray especially for the recent sick. Bishop John Flack, Linda Davis, Fred Tomlinson and Graham Bynon Fisher. Lord, in a moment of silent prayer, we bring before you those who are long-term sick and have asked for our prayers. We pray for all those who are lonely, separated from and anxious for loved ones. We think of those suffering from illness and their carers, those recovering, and those who are no longer able to care for themselves. Father, we ask you to bring reconciliation and wholeness where there's division, sickness and sorrow. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our prayer. prayer. We remember those who have gone before in the peace of Christ. And we give you praise for all your faithful ones, with whom we rejoice in the communion of saints. We think of those who have died recently, especially those known to us. We pray for the souls of the faithful departed, especially today, Barbara Fenton. Rest eternal unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May we rely on you in strength and rest in you in weakness, now in all our days. We ask you to keep the whole church living and departed in the joy of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. citizens with the saints and of the household of God through Christ our Lord who came and preached peace to those who were far off and those who were near. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us exchange with one another a sign of peace. Now our offertory hymn number 391.
as the grain once scattered in the fields and the grapes once dispersed on the hillside are now reunited on this table in bread and wine. So, Lord, may your whole church soon be gathered together from the corners of the earth into your kingdom. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, and now we give you thanks, most gracious God, surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses and glorified in the assembly of your saints. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. We, your holy church, acclaim you in communion with the angels and archangels and with all who served you on earth, we worship you now in heaven. We raise our voice to proclaim your glory, forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we, in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. James, St. Peter, and all the blessed saints of heaven, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. <coughs> For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace. I heard the voice of a great multitude crying, Alleluia. The Lord our God has entered into his kingdom. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. We do not presume to, to come, come to this, this your, your table, table, merciful Lord, Lord trusting in our own righteousness, righteousness but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, and that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen.
we remain seated to sing our <laughs> post-communion hymn number 309. <laughs> you have brought us near to an innumerable company of angels and to the spirits of the saints made perfect. As in this food of our earthly pilgrimage, we have shared their fellowship. So may we come to share their joy in heaven. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Father of all, we, we give you thanks and praise. That when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep, Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you stand to receive God's blessing? May God, who kindled the fire of his love in the hearts of the saints, Pour upon you the riches of his grace. Amen. Yeah. 
May he give you joy in their fellowship and a share in their praises. Amen. Amen. May he strengthen you to follow them in the way of holiness and to come to the full radiance of glory. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. We sing our final hymn, number 567. in the ways of holiness and truth. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.